pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start our meeting with the county attorney, Matt Shipman. Hey, good afternoon. I've, I've got a couple of things to report on. One is um, not having much luck in finding a lawyer to take the uh, indulgent case down in Florida. I'm still looking, but um, most of the avenues I have pursued so far, I'm not getting even phone calls back. So, um, so just wanted to give you an update on that. The other... Um, and John's got something I've, I've looked at, and we'll, we can deal with that when that comes up. But the other thing is, um, the um, there's been conversation about submitting a um, victim assistance affidavit related to the incident that we had at the jail, and um, and trying at least to give the judge the ability to make part of that payback, um, part of the restitution award in the criminal case. The only way that's going to happen is if we submit an affidavit with the out-of-pocket expenses that that cost the county and just making sure that the commissioners want us to uh, do that and Angie and I, if so, will gather all the records and <coughs> and, uh, and submit it for, and my suggestion would be let's put everything in there. Judge Rentschler ultimately will decide what to do with it. He could say, you know, I'm not putting any of it in there and he could say all of it. It's just that's his decision at that point. Well, I just want to make a motion that we we pursue this through the that avenue through the criminal. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Well, do you think motion to that propose? needs to be in a motion? Not necessarily. I just wanted no. to make sure that uh, okay. we, we might as well, since you already okay. did it. But it's <coughs> it's um, something that they regularly do already. Um, you know, a very very small. You know, in comparison to the amount of money that incident cost, in comparison to where we normally do it, that's the reason why we're asking. But the work is not much different. It's just more documents to gather. All right. Well, okay, we've so got a motion to I'll start it all second. Okay, we've got a motion to uh, uh, go forward with the victim <laughs> assistance payback uh, or the suit. And uh, we've got a second. Any further discussions? Only that the one, the one for, for public knowledge, the, the one that we have not heard from is the Fort Wayne Fire Department has Matt Bill, and I understand that is that will be forthcoming. And then I believe once we calculate all the overtime for all the departments that were involved, um, the Protect bill, uh, Fort Wayne Fire overtime. Yeah, the other two well, escape me right expenses now. From the, what about yeah. the expenses from the fire department here, Columbus City? That's, they have to turn those in or we have to? Uh, they would have to turn those into us so we know, so we have them. So. Uh -huh. That's it. Ock Health and the Hospital. Yep. Yep. Because those are big bills. So. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. I don't think I have anything else unless you guys have questions for me. Um, I just gave you something regarding redevelopment that I'd just like you to, okay. to I'll look at. consider. Okay. First on the agenda then is Kim Erdley, temporary deputy position. She's our counter, county assessor. Um, just keeping you all up to date on the request from last month as far as creating a temporary deputy position, um, which council had approved for Jamie to come into. Um, we weren't real clear as far as the code and what the code said for Chief Deputy having to have their level two certification. As it turns out, they do not. So um, we were able to bring her in right into the Chief Deputy position, which will not require the temporary deputy position then. Good. Yeah. Right. At one time, and this is a long time ago, there was a a thousand dollars extra if you were a level two. Is am I right about that? That that is the assessor's 
pay according to the code for holding a level two. Um, if, it, if you're a deputy or chief deputy and hold the level two certification, the code reads that's a $500. So, yeah. so when she becomes a level two, she'll be entitled to that as to well? To the 500, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. <clears throat> Does the code have anything for chief deputy, a timetable when they need to obtain this level two? No, there's no time frame. Just that they, there's just that they have all deputies in the assessor's office, regardless of it, even if we were a county that didn't have the chief deputy status, all deputies are required to have your level two certification. But there's no time period on that, not in that that I've seen. So they can just keep putting it off and putting it off, really. I mean, not, and not be in trouble. Um, you know, I, I suppose if somebody wanted to come back and, you know make a statement yeah. about well, it. Well, it's it kind of funny when it says you need to obtain one, but there's no time limit. Yeah, they don't, they don't put a time limit on it. I think the buck would stop with you. Yeah. You would say, hey, yeah. look, if you don't, I'm going to give you a year, 18 months or right. whatever. So I, th I think that's where the buck would stop was with the, the uh, chief assessor. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine an assessor not... One, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for the record, she Jamie's already obtained yeah. her level one. She's she got passed. her level one. She passed her level one, and, and her, she's scheduled for yeah, level two. Level two is March sixteenth. So yeah. Oh, she's moving right along. Yeah. Great. Good. That's good. It's nice now because they don't hold classes for those. It's all online. Oh, it is. Unless you go to conference. No more Terry it. Knee. <laughs> He's retired. Did he? So that's another good thing. Did he? Okay. So, yeah, okay. Finally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But that's if, it. Pardon me? Does the code say if you were absent, can the level one deputy be legal to open the bit for business? That That's the whole point of having a chief deputy. You know, basically, mm -hmm. yeah, there, it says in the code that in the assessor's absence that the chief deputy is, they're going to run the show. So. Okay. Yep. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Kim. Okay. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you, Kim. Yep. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Nathan Bilger, Plan Commission Board Member Appointment. Thank you. Should have received in your packets a memo outlining some names of people who have volunteered for uh, serving as one of the citizen members on the County Plan Commission. Uh, those uh, the five people listed uh, were looked at, uh, is expressed interest, and looked at for uh, their primary voting records. Uh, as we're, as you already know, we're looking for someone who's a non-Republican due to state statute uh, that no more than three people of the five citizen members can be of the same political party. Um, this would be replacing Kenny Carrick, who uh, resigned or stepped down at the end of his term at the beginning of the year. So if you have any questions <coughs> for me. Did you have any recommendations? I do not. Um, I don't know any of them in, uh, personally uh, outside of work. Uh, I will say that two of them are fairly young and don't have an extensive voting record. Uh, uh, that would be Mr. Lopez and Mr. Wright. Uh, both have just voted once in a general election. The other three have uh, much more extensive voting records. Commissioners? I'd like to make a motion that we table this for one more meeting. Um, there's a couple of people on the list that I I don't know that well I'd like to talk to. Okay, we've got a motion to uh, table until next meeting or... Second. Okay, we've got a second for the discussions. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Scott Wagner, junk and trash issue. As commissioners are aware that you passed uh, or approved a bid to clean up the Van Houten property on West Division Road on November the 20th. The 90 days given for that project expired on February the 20th. That project is not completed, nor has that uh, contractor submitted a bill or requested me to visit the site. I have, of course, visited the site every month since you uh, accepted the bid. I would say at this point, he's maybe 50% done. Uh, there wasn't any activity that I'm aware of in January at all. Um, I took pictures of it this morning. You're more than welcome to come out and take a look at it yourself. I spoke with the contractor, and he says he's working on it, but it doesn't give me a timeline. Um, based upon his current activity, <laughs> It, it, this may stretch in for at least another couple months, if not more. Uh, so I, I don't know what the legal uh, counsel would advise on whether you withdraw his bid or rebid it or what legal course action you have if you want to continue to let him <coughs> meander <laughs> or what. But uh, Wasn't he significantly less money yes. than the second bidder? Well, not the second bidder. Uh, I think he was about $900 less than the second bidder. The third bidder, which was Columbia City Iron and Metal, they're about 10000 That yeah, was the I next level. Was so city. he was about two-thirds less than them. Yeah. And um, if we were to do that, we, we would... Um, um, this is a question, not a statement. Sounds like a statement. But we, we would have to pay him for his month time spent, wouldn't we? I, I don't know. Obviously, he's removed articles from the property and gotten reimbursed for that amount because a lot of this was metal. That's right. So he has yeah. made some money off of it. Yeah. Um, it would be up to your legal counsel to decide whether you have the right to withdraw that and not pay him at all yeah. or, or rebid the project or, or continue to let him finish. He could not give me a date of when he was going to be done. Do you think the weather has been an issue here? I think the weather in the last two weeks have been an issue, but prior to that, I mean, from November when this started, it froze up pretty good. Obviously, there was snow on the ground, but this type of uh, excavation would be easy with a frozen ground to remove items. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, it was cold, but they knew that going in. That's why we gave them 90 days. This is the fifth. Yeah. I think between now and May 5th, they should, they should have the ability to do it. So my, I, I would make a motion that we give, extend it 60 days till May the 5th. Okay, we got a motion for a 60-day extension. Discussion? Oh, we got a second. Second for discussion. Okay, second for discussion. I guess I don't have a big issue with 60 more days, or a couple more months. I guess my thought is he's done 50% of the work, so if he can get the other 50% done in 60 days. I'll advise him that he has that deadline or yeah, he may you know, seek legal action. That's a firm deadline. Yep, so. okay. You know, the stuff's been laying there for 10 or 15 or 20 years. You know, what's a couple more months? Okay. Okay, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Mark Sturdivant. Uh, Mark said he be a little, little bit late. be a little bit late because of the they're putting the chiller in over it. Okay. Sheriff Gatton, did you have something? No, Mark's just still stuck over the jail right now. Okay. Did you want to make his presentation then? No, sir. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd ask it just in case. Okay. You have nothing to say. <laughs> well, that'd be a first. <laughs> okay. Um, John? Oh, John, yeah. Mr. Myers. So formal. Why didn't I have that on? <laughs> oh, thanks. I just uh, wanted to come in, and I, I realized it was kind of last minute on this, but wanted to update you on the broadband project uh, that we had talked about uh, last uh, November. 
Um, as, as you may recall, um, I mean, the, the issue was we we're trying to increase the fiber access uh, for primarily for our businesses, but really any place out uh, in the TIF district. Um, and we've had several conversations with the businesses out there, and that's kind of the biggest challenge that they all have um, have currently because they don't have the speed and dependability that they need, particularly for the logistics uh, sides of their uh, businesses. Um, the uh, Redevelopment Commission has been continued to have conversations with uh, Indiana Fiber Network, which um, Tony Miller is, is here from IFN if, if you have any questions. But um, uh, but we have a draft of, of a contract which I, I gave to Matt um, last, well, at the end of last, very end of last week. Um, and I know uh, in talking to him earlier today, uh, he has a couple of questions on it. But uh, primarily the, the terms uh, having to do with pricing and stuff like that, um, I think we're in a, in a pretty good place there. Um, I just to make sure that we weren't doing something or spending money that, that wasn't going to get the value out of it that, that we um, were hoping to, um, I uh, took a poll of uh, 29 of the businesses uh, out in the TIF area. I got responses from 19. Um, of those 19, uh, based on the pricing that we currently have in the contract, uh, 14 of those companies said they would sign up right away. Um, three more said that they would as soon as their current contracts uh, expired and had two that said the pricing wasn't um, as different or it wasn't worth their time really to, uh, to, to do something different. They might look at it, but, but they didn't have any, any urgency uh, in the situation. But I uh, got very positive response um, uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the companies and would really, really like to um, move forward with this. I was just talking to Tanya, actually talked to her last week and then asking just now, Something, even though the focus here has been on the, the TIF area and the service of the businesses there, um, because of the location where they had to go for the location of the switch, um, it's probably going to result in, uh, again, the same low pricing that for the same speeds um, all up and down, well, at least to the, to the west side of Columbia City, but all along US 30. Now, again, the focus has been for our businesses and using uh, redevelopment uh, money to uh, um, and seed it money to to get that pricing down to where it is, but um, looks like it's going to be a, a much uh, bigger opportunity for some of the other businesses that uh, are located uh, relatively close to US 30, all the way out to Armstrong Park area. So, um, little little extra bonus, I guess. Um, you know, I guess, I guess that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's been very, very positive response from the, the companies out there. But okay. and I know REMC in particular, uh, Eric keeps calling me and says, uh, uh, when, when, when are we going to get this? When are we going to get this done? So, okay. um, John, you know, we've been working on this off and on for, what, two years maybe? At least. At least. And we were, we were running into dead end streets and alleys. Do you feel confident now that we're, we're at a, on a street that's not got a dead end? Yes, and the reason I say that is because this uh, particular fiber company, and I can, can let Tanya speak to this as well, I mean, they have fiber along 30 all the way from Fort Wayne to, um, to Warsaw. And so here what we're really talking about is helping to get the equipment in place so they can um, kind of spread that out a little bit and use the infrastructure that's that's already in place. They historically have done just wholesale um, internet services, and this is something that they want to um, maybe expand into a little more. And uh, so it's um, kind of new for us, kind of new for them, but, but all the, like I said, all of the uh, – um, well, a big chunk of the infrastructure is already in place, so we're not talking about somebody starting from scratch. Anything? Did I get that right, or anything you'd like to add yeah, to that? Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know if you know anything about our, our company. Um, Come on up here, so. 
Get you on the record. Okay. And I did bring um, a copy of the uh, proposal presentation that I shared with the economic development folks. I just brought one with me, so I can certainly send it to you via the email. Um, or I can make copies and send it to you guys to take a look at. Right. So we, we've been in business for um, about 16 years. Um, we are owned by 20 what I call mom and pop. Um, small local phone companies throughout the state of Indiana. Uh, we were formed to serve them, to provide internet services long distance. So we've been around for a long time. Um, our ownership, uh, the thing I love, I'm relatively new to the company. Um, we're not going to be sold and be bought by Wall Street. You know, we serve our member owners. So we've got this fiber asset in ground, roughly uh, 4,500 miles of fiber throughout the state of Indiana. Um, traditionally, we've served enterprise space. So, you know, Zimmer, customer, Parkview customer, they tend to be more larger organizations, um, primarily driven by the cost to build fiber networks. Fiber construction is very expensive. The equipment is expensive. Um, and so we've got pockets throughout the state of Indiana where we've got a lot of fiber in the ground, um, and this is one of them, where we've got 144 strands of fiber um, running through along 30. And so how we can try to leverage that and um, attract um, a more small, medium business um, to get to a price point where they can afford us because typically, you know, companies only want to spend two, three hundred dollars a month. Um, and so we started speaking with John and uh, the requirements of the city and this is our first, first swag at it as well. We haven't done this anywhere else. We hope to duplicate this in other areas. Um, we're hoping a lot of customers take advantage of the pricing. Sounds like they're going to, to really make it worthwhile for us because we are for profit. Um, so we want to make sure we're doing, uh, making good choices. So do you see the other communities in Whitley County becoming involved, namely Chair Busco, South Whitley? So no, I, I, don't, I don't even know. So I'm, sure, I'm don't work born Busco. and raised in Indiana, but I'm Indianapolis. So I'm learning Indiana. It's a very big city okay. so, <laughs> or area. Yeah, so, so conversations that I have had with South Whitley and Chair Busco in particular is um, IFN has had some cooperation and work with um, a maple net, which is a, a, um, a, wireless, you know, a wireless broadband provider uh, centered out of Elkhart, Elkhart. or Goshen. Elkhart, mm -hmm. um, and so I've had conversations with them. And in fact, if if this goes forward, what we're going to talk about, kind of next step, would be um, since there are since they're already serving the Parkview locations in Cherubusco and South Whitley. Um, it wouldn't be that hard to run fiber to water towers in each of the towns and put uh, broadcast um, uh, high, you know, broadband. Uh, Do it that way instead of that literally running the fiber. It'd be a lot cheaper. And bandwidth okay. speeds with wireless now can get upwards, I believe, is 25 megs. So for most homeowners, that's going to be more than enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and I've already, so I've already spoken to the folks on the Chair of Busco Town Board, Frank in particular, and uh, um, Randy Kokel in, in South Whitley about it. So everybody's ready. It's just a matter of me uh, kind of pulling it all together. All right. You, oh, you also mentioned the fact that, that Eric and, and Nor at Northeastern, one, when... It's the time for those, for that organization to become involved if they want to lengthen our coverage or increase our coverage. Yeah, so we've, we've had conversations, um, or I've had conversations with Eric in particular. Or do you mean just within Park 30? No, I mean, no, in Northeastern Service Territory. Oh, okay. Well, I know... I know uh, Eric has had conversations with IFN, oh. and I still think... Well, I think the, the pricings may be um, not quite there yet, um, so okay. the, the, the discussions continue. So again, if we can get a good start in Park 30 and, and uh, Rail Connect and all of the business areas along there, just get some momentum for us. All right. Um, so like I said, this is this has already been approved, um, I guess, give you an opportunity to uh, have second thoughts about it, um, but the original proposal was that it, it would uh, uh, cost $160,000 that the Redevelopment Commission, well, 
County commissioners would pay the full amount of the $160,000 out of uh, on-site, off-site, and, um, and then the Redevelopment Commission would reimburse the CDIT funds for half of that to, uh, um, again, to use the infrastructure TIF money to help pay for it. So the net, the net is eighty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, and I, and of course, um, uh, IFN is would like to get started as soon as as possible. I mean, the weather is going to break here shortly, and uh, um, so it's I've been the the weak link here in terms of pulling contracts together and getting uh, stuff all together. But I don't know whether that. Since it's approved, whether you just leave it to Matt and or one of you guys to make the final decision, or do you want to wait until the next meeting uh, on the 19th to approve the actual contract itself? So from, from the contract standpoint, John and I have talked about it, um, the, the basic terms are in there. It's just, um, you know, some of the how those payments will come, when they'll come, you know, default provisions to, you know, to the extent to protect the county. That kind of stuff just needs to be flushed out. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but the contract's not ready to be signed. The issue is whether or not you guys feel comfortable with John and I working with uh, IFN to get that done. And then, you know, since you've already approved the money, which is the right. issue, um, then just bringing the contract to you or whether you want to come back to the commissioner's meeting and have me formally tell you, hey, we've got the contract hammered out where everybody's comfortable. I, I think it's something we've just been waiting on, so. Um, big time. Do, do you, I, I, if Matt's satisfied with it, I, I don't see any sense of bringing it back unless somebody has a, a real reason to. No, I think you all Because you're is. responsible to us anyway. Well, right. right. Ultimately, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to give the con I'm, once John and I get the contract done, you'll see it yeah, okay? right. and make sure that it's okay. I just don't, it doesn't necessarily have to come back for a vote because you've already allocated the money. It's just a matter of the formal signing of the document that's the issue. I, yeah. I, I guess my thought on it. It may take is, two weeks for John and I to, to do that anyway, so this may be a moot point. It may be, be the next meeting before we see it anyway. Could be. Uh, that's kind of my thought. I'd, you know, I'd rather wait until the next meeting. We're only talking two weeks here and, and get. Everything approved. Let let give us a chance to look at things, and mm -hmm. and if there is something that comes yeah. up, that we well, can deal with it. Doesn't make any difference. Motion to table. Yes. So uh, second, second March meeting. Yes. Second. We've got a motion. We got a second. Further discussions. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll get it done. All yeah. right. Yep. John, one thing I was going to have you bring up was uh, Gator Case, the the difference in time that it would make for them just having IF, IFN compared to what they're using right now. Their uh, IFN would be like 13 seconds between each um, of their uh, operations, and, and it was going to be what? It, it's 40 seconds now, and you compare that times 350 operations that they have every day, and it it was a big savings for them. Yeah, so so they were excited about it. They were at redevelopment for a different purpose, but uh, yeah, but Troy Weimer basically it calculated out to like two and a half or three hours a day when you calculate all the time that people are just standing there waiting for the stuff to print off at the printer and you know, that person could be packing more packages or doing other <laughs> other things. And if you multiply that times, you know, fourteen companies, I mean we're talking talking a lot of a lot of hours and a lot of time. And he was excited about it. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Brandon, did you have anything? Yeah. Look at that handful. Mm -hmm. This is Brandon Forrester, our highway engineer and uh, highway director. Last week or a week before, but they had to do some revisions. That came revised uh, version came in today in the mail. I reviewed it and I actually didn't put my own PCF on it. I can do that if you want. All right. Here. 
Dunk. Um, also, got today, I just printed one copy. This is a guardrail standard for our bridges. Currently, our inspectors, the only thing they have to go by is basically federal standards. And uh, the majority of our roads don't see the traffic that state and federal highways do. So um, there is an option for us to adopt our own standards. I've worked with our uh, bridge design consultant, and they've prepared that. Uh, for us, and so if um, I, and I'm good with that, uh, as that's basically what we have been doing for a number of years now. We are using concrete barrier on our bridges as opposed to guardrail that's bolted to the bridge. Um, that that doesn't stop a vehicle sometimes, depending on the angle of the blow. So. Um, it just makes for a better structure and then <clears throat> a lot of times for whatever reason there's a field entrance right next to the bridge it's a lot of times it's property lines at, at the ditches and so um, they added a curved uh, terminal end which is uh, that is actually does meet an in-dot standard but um, <coughs> so I just would uh, recommend that that we uh, approve that as part of our highway standards and then when the, the inspections take place uh, possibly starting today um, it shows that we're compliant with our standards and you're comfortable that all legal issues are Yes. Taken care of with yes. this. Right. I move we approve these prints for our, our bridge standards from Willie County Highway Department. Second. Got a motion to approve the bridge approach guardrail standards. We've got a second. Further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you, Brandon. Okay. Thank you. And um, last Friday, I emailed you our annual report um, not sure uh, how much time you had sleep to lose reading that or gain I mean um, basically it's a financial report uh, that uh, shows the state that goes to the State Board of Accounts and to Indiana LTAP showing the money that we receded the money that we expended um, it's not a budget item by budget item report but it breaks it out somewhat by administrative and maintenance and construction and reconstruction so it is a requirement as another requirement for the community crossings grants that we have received money for so um, and it is state law we have to do this regardless of sure. the community crossings grant so I'd make a motion that we approve the Annual report for highway. Oh, I second it. Got a motion to approve the annual operational report for local roads and, state and streets. Is this some new? Annual no. report? No. 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 Martin came every year with it. Got a second. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. I don't know how accurate you're supposed to suppose. Yeah, you can't offer someone to do it. Good work, I'm sure. Okay, there's the report. Thank you. The same annual report? That's the annual report. If you could, yeah, sign and date. There's actually two, there's three copies, and there's actually two permit applications. Uh, because they're doing work on two different permits. So, if you could, yeah, sure. Sign both of those, both of these. It's the fifth? Yeah. I've been working my watch.
Mm -hmm. this yeah, there's three copies, but there's actually two. They did run two applications for each copy because they didn't work on four months out and so like Wait a minute, I only signed that one time. Okay. for the NIPSCO. Make a motion to approve the NIPSCO permit. Okay, we've got a motion to approve. Yes. Second. Got a second. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, the same. Thank you. Thank you. Um, real quick, Bridge 111, King Street, over the railroad in Laurel. Um, we have been communicating with the railroad for a number of months now. They were able to uh, discover some plans from when that bridge was built in the 60s. Um, and I've shared that with our design engineer. They're doing a structural analysis. <clears throat> um, the end vents are still deteriorated, but we're looking at an option of possibly uh, making improvements to those end vents and possibly increasing that load rating on that bridge. Um, surely for significantly less money than to totally replace it. Um, so that's, that's in process right now. Um, I, I would like to, I've, I'm working on getting data <clears throat> to the engineer for the Richland Township Fire Department vehicles um, to see if it'd be possible for those fire trucks to, to pass over that bridge. Now that may be a long shot, but we'll, we'll see how the data comes in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we still have some high water out there. A couple of the spots are due to county tiles that got uh, plugged with roots or otherwise. Um, one of them we had a con. The, the one that we got the most calls on with all of this high water was 900 East North of Cherubusco. Contractor is out there this morning uh, working on getting that at least opened up so we can get it to drain, so we can replace the tile. It's got roots in it. Have you figured out what the issue is there? It was roots in the tile, yeah. There's a lot of trees, runs through uh, Dale Duncan's place and under his driveway, their driveway. So um, we're doing what we can, where we can. Some of those are private tile issues, and I've been communicating with some landowners to 
try and get something figured out there on some of those. Others just had excessive runoff. A lot of rain on frozen ground makes a lot more runoff. So, But we are monitoring those regularly. Uh, we've got some new equipment ordered. Got some equipment. We got a new trailer ready to be delivered uh, for skid loader. The skid loader that we bought last year. Uh, we've got a gravel road maintainer delivered. Um, we've got a mower, tractor and mower ordered. And um, so now we need a place to put it. <clears throat> Which we're working on that all day. <coughs> Still working on some options for a salt barn. That would free up some building space that we have right now that wasn't built to be storing salt in a metal building so still working on options on that um, the, the the snow turned to rain turned to potholes turned to muddy gravel roads so we've I mean overlapping duties we've been hitting it as we can today they're working on improving some gravel roads get those kind of into shape we'll probably go back to patching and hope for the best this morning and this next morning on the roads um, other than that, that's all I had. Thanks for listening. Any questions? Good job. Thank Thanks. you, Brandon. Uh, I tried to delay for Mark, but he's still not here. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's look at minutes. Everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes. Any additions, amendments? It looked all right to me. Uh, move we approve the minutes for the last meeting that Second. is presented. Second. Okay, we got a motion to approve the February 19th, 2018 minutes. We've got a second. Further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you. I think, Don, you looked at claims. I did. Um, first of all, it was, a, it was a lower number than I've seen for a long time. That was good. Um, and I saw no discrepancies in the claim, so I would start by making a motion we approve the payroll claims. Second. Okay, we've got a motion to approve payroll claims. We've got a second. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, the same. Thank you. I would make a motion we approve the claims as presented by Tamil. Second. Okay, we've got a motion to approve the claims as presented by Tamala. Uh, we've got a second for the discussions. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Before you talk oh, to the yeah. council. Yeah, I'll bring that up at the. Okay. Angie. Um, to begin with, in regards to the creation of the personnel committee tomorrow at the council meeting, I will be requesting that the HR be added to the committee as a non voting person or, yeah, a non voting member of that committee. And then um, 
Matt and I are going to discuss. <laughs> I was going to make the recommendation that the county attorney also be placed on the committee as non-voting, but um, he's had a few more questions, so that may change between now and tomorrow at 8. Okay. And then um, I have two uh, facility requests. One is from Shambaugh and Son, Mike Morgan. They are doing a project on, I think it's Kaiser Road and maybe County Road 300 at 9, um, and they would like to store their equipment at the highway department. So I was hoping Brandon wouldn't leave. He didn't, he didn't have an issue with it when I spoke to him last week, um, but their project does begin today. He contacted me on Friday. But, so. How long was this storage going to be? He thought just a week. But he didn't know for sure. He said he would coordinate with Brandon in regards to where they would actually like the equipment placed and so forth. But and they're actually contracted by NDOT. That matters. Sure, it's fine, but I, boy, I'd like to hear from Brianna, but you have talked to him. Mm -hmm. I spoke to him, and then his email response was, as long as he coordinates with Kevin. Apparently, they had done it before. I see. Okay. All right. I move we approve it. Got a motion to approve. Second for discussion. Got a second for discussion. Um, can it be, can, can the motion include, provided it's cleared through Kevin and can, approved by click Kevin? Yeah, would Brandon go upstairs? Yeah, he must have. Yeah. Is he on the whole, let me just check and see if he's Yeah, there. check him. Okay, there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Come here. What about this? No question. Oh, yeah, right. I, I, I didn't come through me. About it. You have any issues? Oh. I suppose not. I mean, it, have they, they moved in today know. already? or? Because oh. it starts. Okay. Not that I saw. Um, whatever it is, the Mike Morgan needs to be in contact with, I think, didn't I? Kevin. Yeah, and to kind of our to keep them out of our way and make sure we're not in their way. I mean, yeah. it seems like a lot of space when you're driving around back there until you're driving a tandem dump truck. Yeah, but you have stuff put in in order in case you need it. So well, right. That's yeah. the other. That's thing. why yeah. we just didn't want to do anything without. We don't want them parking in front of our grip piles because we could get mm -hmm. some wintry mix tonight. So. You have a telephone number for them. I have this email. I'm sure that there's a number. Okay. Is it on the yeah, form? Yeah, it's on there. Yeah. Four one zero four one nine three. So we just let them know <laughs> that there are. Huh? <laughs> Did he get that? You want it? <laughs> you gonna call him? <laughs> so I was just making it. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> are you? So Tom, are you okay with changing the motion to to include permission and? Coordination with someone at the highway department. Yeah. Okay, we got uh, the motion has been amended to become uh, approval with uh, <coughs> approval from highway department personnel for the placement and uh, um, timing. Second. Second. Oh, second. Okay. Okay, we got a motion. We got a second for the discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. So should should you, mark, you mark approved on this or not? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Stipulations. Yeah. 
right? Approved with stipulations. second one is from um, the Downtown Business Alliance, and it's um, in regards to the first Fridays of every month beginning in June and running through October. Um, it's for the Courthouse Square and all around the square, and including the gazebo. Sharon Geiger's the one who submitted this. Did she ever submit one? She talked to me about the alley out here. Did she ever do that? Um, Is that part of this? I, to be honest, I was confused when she stopped into the office, but I will say within days that was under my door. So I'm I'm going under the assumption that that is including the alley, but okay. I will speak with her to verify. Okay, we'll go under she that. She already had approval for the alley, so that's. Well, I guess my question here is um, the same time of year we have the farmer's market. That's Saturday mornings, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And this is Friday. Isn't this what they did last Friday night? Friday, All first Friday. First Friday of every month. Mm -hmm. So I have no more questions. <laughs> I like any day that any day that we get into the day. <laughs> Move we approve it. Got a motion second. to approve. We've got a second. Further discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, the same. Thank you. I, I do have a question related to um, Angie's question about the the personnel committee. Is whether or not I mean that's whether you guys want me to be on that committee, and you know. So obviously, you know, that's, I don't know how often they meet, but whether you think that's a, before before we put me on it, whether you guys want me on it, um, or whether it's a if they need me, call me, or whether I should. I think right now it's going to be quite regular while we go through the Michael Frizzell, um re-examination or recertification. <laughs> so I'm. I, you know, I'll leave that up to my fellow commissioners what their thoughts are on that. Uh, and if you would like me to explain how I came to that. Yes, please. I actually called Wagner, Irwin, and Sheely and just said, I know you guys were the ones who ultimately created the personnel committee. Can you just tell me, um, do you have any guidelines or um, are there any statutes how to create this? Who needs to be on it? Who doesn't? Um, they said typically it was created mostly of your councilmen with at least one commissioner. And then, to, so that would be your first four, three council, one commissioner, and then the fifth one was kind of, it was typically human resources. But if you were in a county that didn't have human resources, it was your auditor because they were the ones that took care of that, those functions. So it would be three council, commissioner, and HR. So the auditor's already been placed on that committee. And so it was their recommendation because I, I felt that human resources should actually be involved since they're the ones that are going to be doing all the paperwork, all the maintaining of all of that information that they kind of needed to be involved in the process, but not necessarily as a voting member. And um, they kind of thought that was a great idea, but then also recommended that the count, they say that county attorneys often serve on that committee as well, just from the legality of it. Um, but that's, it could also be an as needed basis or if we needed any consultation, but they highly recommended that human resources be involved in the committee as well. But since that would make an even number, mm. so, non-voting for me. So you've been on personnel committee. Have you been on personnel committee? Okay. So my question is. Have you ever said, boy, I wish we had an attorney here? I can't say as we did. 
I mean, that, that's my thought, is that I think an as-needed kind of, they have questions, call me, but yeah, I could me see. sitting in committee meetings where they're arguing about, you know, job descriptions, mm -hmm. probably not a good use of, but it's, uh, it's your call. You're always know. available anyway. Yeah, I mean, you can, Angie can, Angie and I talk a lot, so <laughs> <laughs> she can always call me with questions. So, <laughs> so I guess my, my thought would be as-needed basis. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that's what I will you say. You would have to be an integral, very integral part of the committee. Yeah. That's what I anticipate, but. Yeah. Okay. I just, why we were here, I have to figure yeah. that out before. Okay. I don't have anything else that was. Yeah. Tamala. I don't have anything either. Most of my program is on time. Not at this time. Uh, last meeting, we had a request. It's kind of a, to me, it was kind of a foggy request to get some GIS information. It started out as a gentleman, and I'm sorry, I don't have his name. Wanted to get some some information. I think it's about drainage. Isn't it? It really makes no difference. What he wanted was some some GIS information. He wanted free information. And our and our policy would be that the fees for this data request would be approximately sixty nine hundred and twenty dollars. And then all of a sudden he changed from whoever he was to well this is really something that Indiana University wants, which I thought was kind of peculiar. So um, I've been. I've been told by Commissioner Western, who knows Robert's Rules of Orders much better than I do, that you can't make a negative motion. But um, so I, I just make a somehow I make a motion that we don't approve his request for free information. That he, uh, can I say something? Because I'm actually dealing with this. And that's why I was going to talk to Matt afterwards. Yeah. Yes. Come right up. Come right on up here to the hot seat, son. Not so much for GIS, but Indiana University's Department of Education throughout the state of Indiana right now is putting out a bunch of public request information for employee or inmate grieving, grievances, inmates uh, information packet. Well, they're not being specific. They've just asked for four years' worth of information. So I do have a template, which I was going to talk to Matt about afterwards, but this is something their whole one division's doing with the Indiana University right now. So it's not uncommon. They're going after all public agencies is what they're doing first. So I don't know how it came to you an appearance on whether it was a public request information under the Public Information Act or not. But I do know that's going on. But it kind of, as Don said earlier, it was so foggy we did. Well, you got you to gotta remember, Mark, it's completely free if you want to go on Beacon Schneider right. and look it up yourself. So so we don't charge for that information unless you want voluminous amounts of bulk information and you don't want to sit down and do the work. So so that's how we came up with, with the, there is a price structure for okay. this. Well, I was just letting you know they are doing that. Yeah. Some of them have even had returns without an email address or a phone number for us, anyways. Isn't so. that something? That makes no sense, really. But yeah. are they at, are they trying to get something that's not on Beacon? Yeah, from us they are. Uh, I don't know yeah. what exactly they're trying to get or the cost, but for us, our policy for the public information is to walk in and fill it out manually because we don't have all of our information on the computer to be given away. So I just know throughout the state of Indiana and the sheriff's broadcast, this is an ongoing issue right now. So what's your feeling on this? That I will have to follow the Public Information Act and what the attorney tells me. Well, you know, I, I'm just confused. I don't know what, the, what what are they going to use the information for? I don't know what they're getting all this data for or what they're going to use it for. Maybe it's just a study for their students. I don't know. 
could be, you know, it could be somebody writing a thesis on something. That's what I was thinking. It could be somebody going for a thesis. Could be. And again, be, I have no the, problem with giving the information away, but not voluminous amounts of. Yeah. But man, as long as it's it's available on Beacon Snyder, do we have to provide it then? Um, in talking about the GIS, not Mark's. Right. Yeah, we're talking about GIS. GIS. Yeah, the GIS, um, and I can't remember exactly what it is they requested, but the information. yeah, it was something that we don't easily just have in a document that you can say here. It was some somebody's going to have to do work to generate what they want, mm -hmm. and we don't have to do that. We just have to give people what we already have. Okay. Um, but I can't remember the exact. That that is the point. This was the stuff details. we don't have. So yeah. And we, so if we yeah. got to pay yeah. somebody to do something, then it's. Well, if I was if I was totally convinced, yes, this is a an Indiana University research product. I'd probably feel differently, but. The first que request came from Joe Blow, mm -hmm. and when he was told that there would be a, a, a charge to it, he says, well, actually, this is an Indiana University request. So, Stanley, did you have so something? Wasn't it drainage information that they were wanting to do? Yeah, watershed, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, assumed, I assumed when I heard this last meeting that that everything from farm ditches clear through to every kind of supported ones clear through to streets and other waterways that, you know, everything can be a river. Yeah, I don't think I can address that, Stanley. I don't. The request is for, yeah, the request is for all of the county's drainage layers and he has spoken to Brandon Forrester because he is the independent, I'm sorry, he is the department head that handles the county's drains. So he spoke to Brandon about drainage. Where did Brandon go now? <laughs> so I guess I just hate to, I hate to table it and kick the can down the road farther. I, I that's why I brought my right now. Well, I don't feel comfortable enough to prove anything at this time. Yeah. So not turning them down either. I withdraw my motion then. It's not that big a deal. I withdraw. Well, I'd like to know the reason for this. Should I ask Dan if he can get some more information from him regarding? Oh, we can just table it at this point. Couldn't we just to? Yeah, well, okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll table it. But we're going to ask But Dan. I guess I want the person to come. <laughs> the person to come to the meeting and tell us why he believes we should give him $7,000 worth of information. Yeah, I understand. Oh. Yeah. The information that you're being requested of, is it different than the pension plan information? Yes. Okay. I have the emails I just wanted to talk to you before I start firing okay. everything off. <laughs> Mark, Mark, while you're here, I've got your uh, jail report yes, sir. for the statistics. Shocking. It yes, really is. This year has been. Um, between 2016 and 2017, we went from 640 drug-related offenses to 908. One year. One year. One year. But there is one little side note there. If somebody comes in on an initial charge and is arrested and then they come back and serve time, even though that's only one person charged, it hits twice as coming into our facility because once as an initial, and if they bond out when they come <coughs> back to serve time, it shows up again. So. But that would have been the same for 16 and 17, Correct. Though. It's the same yeah. uh, stats for each yeah. year. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big ones was, uh, was a chemical Deployments went from zero last year to 20, or zero in 2016 to 24 last year. Is that Narcan? No, that would be pepper spray. Pepper spray. Yes, sir. Yeah, chemical agent uh, deployments, zero in 16 like, to 24 and 17. Correct. Taser deployments from six and 17, or 16 to 25 and 17. 
which in May hopefully projected with all departments we were going to come over and present the increase in every department we've had uh, in 16 to 17 so restraint chair usage from 30 to 98 and inmate to inmate altercations from 21 to 30 so I can I can think it gives us a picture of what's going on um, in our jails now and why we're having issues with right you know injuries and yeah you really know how to finish the meeting strong with a downer don't you George? <laughs> <laughs> but I just you sent the paper I have to understand <laughs> yeah, it has her name on it <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I was planning on coming over in the May meeting with all divisions and talk to you about the increase in each one. It's it just what's your what's your solution? Well, how much time you got? Yeah, how much time, and uh, we'll keep working forward with the jail tests. We have one this week, uh, and then we'll like to not speak out of any form right now or step too far forward until we get that squared away. So. Yeah, we have our jail task force meeting uh, the seventh. Wednesday and uh, we're going to get some reports from our consultants at that time and then they've also compiled a, a lot of statistics from the sheriff and from uh, community corrections um, so we're working on that we've only got for another 60 days I think and, mm -hmm. and we have to come up with some kind of a, a plan uh, on how we're going to do this not only the plan but funding for that plan funding, also yeah. Scary stuff. I hope you present this to the council also. I will the day after we we come here. That was the plan. Okay. Thank you, Mark. You bet. And Sturdivant's not here yet. Do we wait for Mark or? Not totally. We, we have his report, and um, change the process. So I know we wanted to get that panic button going. Well, what projects did we speak of? In you didn't seat it. it. Okay, seat it. Sanitary lines. Sanitary lines for the jail. Chimney restoration. Courthouse north and south sidewalk. And generator, generator. for community, community corrections. I really feel strongly about the generator for community oh, corrections. Oh, yeah, we've been so fortunate. We have been so darn fortunate. Gosh almighty. Okay, that's something. Let's let's go ahead and look at the CETA plan that we've got that uh, we're going to present to yeah, council at their next meeting. We've got a 2018 CETA plan. Uh, the commissioners have uh, gone through this and, and come up with a, a plan. We've got 12 different projects. I don't know if we should go. You want to go through all of them? Or? Oh, just mention yeah. right, the, 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 the financial amount. I was going to say, well, what I was going to say is if you mention whether there's been an increase or not, because most of the time you're going to hear there's been no increase. Yeah. Aren't you? Yep. I mean, this is the same. This is pretty much the same plan as we've had for a long time. So yeah. The only thing is uh, we are going to pay off um our loan for the health insurance, which was six hundred and thirty-five thousand uh, dollars, we're down for the last hundred thousand, and uh, our health trust account has been. Uh, our, our employees are doing so well with that that we're able to pay for not only the loan for the health insurance for one hundred fifty thousand out of that, that that we're also going to be able to pay uh, um, one of the payments out of that within the next couple of months. So we've done, our, our employees are doing a great job in their wellness plans, and uh, so I, I do want to say that. Um, but, and for anyone here that's not, oh, Mark just walked in the Oh, way. there he is. For anyone here that's not uh, familiar with the $600,000 expenditure, which is two or three years ago, um, 
we found out we had no we had no insurance for um, transplants, and we had a we had a uh, employee's spouse that needed a transplant, so it was obvious we had to pay for it, and we've been paying off paying that loan down every every since six hundred thousand dollars for the. Well, that bill was double that. Yeah. Well, no, we got a, we got as good a deal as you're going to get for for cash, but yeah. And, so. and to let everyone know, the CEDA plan is actually it's a county economic development income tax plan, and uh, um, everybody in in their paychecks pays a, a 0.25 percent uh, tax on uh, um, out of their their wages, and that's what provides this CEDA plan. So it's not free money; it's your money. Right, our money. Um, the only other thing we had was the judges' chambers and a security upgrade of thirty thousand dollars. Also, okay. um, and uh, because we had money left in our program, we tried to to uh, be good stewards of this money and and determine what would be best for this money. So we ended up looking at uh, uh, some. Issues with uh, maintenance in the in the jail courthouse, and uh, uh, we came up with sanitary lines for the jail of ninety thousand dollars, chimney restoration in the courthouse uh, seventy one thousand dollars, courthouse north and south sidewalk. We've had issues with that. We've had people fall, um, and that's another seventy thousand dollars. And then uh, community corrections does not have an electric generator out there. If something would happen out there, we'd have to determine what we're going to do with with the uh, uh, inmates out there, and uh, it would be an issue to, to be able to, to do anything with them. The jail's full, so um, we did. We picked the best projects that we could come up with at two hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. And the last page was a, a drawing George made of a polar bear on an ice cap in Alaska. So <laughs> you didn't really want me to have that blank page, did you? <laughs> Uh, I just I think it's a great this is, this is several years I've been through the CEDA plans I think it's a great plan I appreciate it George you did a lot of work on it I yeah, I guess, it. Uh, I don't know, yeah we've been mulling this thing over for three or four months yeah we've all had our ideas on this and I think it, it did come out to be a good plan I do too everybody I do too okay Mr. Sturdivant our maintenance director. Howdy, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Things go well then? We, have, the a we have a chiller. It's online, but uh, they're still working on the controls. Well, you didn't have a fire or anything? No fire. Uh, I trust you got your packet. Uh, we, we trust you're referring to this packet? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, I want to go over a few things, uh, <clears throat> if we could. Um, we need to make a decision on the government center, on these panic buttons. Um, I just want to make sure everybody understands the panic buttons in this building do not work. Uh, you can push them, nothing's going to happen. What um, about the one here? Nothing's going to happen. It used to. As of when? It's, they haven't worked for quite a while. It worked when I pushed it accidentally once. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so I've laid out the three options. We got some quotes. Um, really, um, the, the option I'm recommending is number two there, um, but it does require an annual service agreement for monitoring. Um, any of the, the other two options, if we choose to do them, we're relying on... Uh, uh, some equipment, uh, especially with that option three, makes us totally self-sufficient. But there's a there's a hefty price tag there for equipment. So I guess I'm looking for some direction from you as to what you want to do or which direction you want to go. I guess my 
my question on option two is when, when you're talking about a third party monitoring, is that something that's going to be a time lag? There will be some, yes. It would be a private business that accepts such calls and Correct. deals with... It would be... Uh, like uh, a call center. It would be Williams Electronics, which is who our security system is from. Okay. Um, they're monitoring the museum. Our, their system is in both the jail and the government center. It's just we've elected in the past to monitor our own. By that you mean when we push the button it goes right to dispatch. Right. That 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 link to dispatch no longer works. And one of the, these options um, is option one that would replace that link, that broken link. But what you need to understand with option one is all that does when you push a button is notify dispatch that there somebody in the government center pushed a panic button. It doesn't tell you where in the government center the button was pushed. For that to happen, the officer would have to come into the building and read the panel at the north door and it will tell you who pushed the button. Well, if you only have one, you know where it's at. They're all over the building. Oh, they are. They're in every office. Mm -hmm. Multiple offices. Can you like, just call the auditor's office and ask if someone pushed a button? What's it's that? difficult because we don't know. Yeah. That's why to put it, to fix it to back the way it was really isn't a good option because you still don't know who pushed the button. Um, where with option two, when they push the button, it would go to Williams Electronics. It would tell them exactly who pushed it. They would call dispatch and say, the auditor's office pushed a uh, uh, panic button is activated. So they know exactly where to go. I just want to go back to what you just said, because I don't think you said it right. It'll tell you who pushed the button. It won't tell you who pushed the button. It will tell you what office the button was button activated was pushed, for. not right. who. Well, some some particular offices have their actually have their own. Okay. Okay. But I, mean, I don't know if it'll identify the, office, the button that was does she pushed. She have her very own button. She does, I and mean, we have one in the office, and she has a separate one. So it will tell you exactly which button was pushed. You can get that same. We can get that same result from option. Uh, three, the problem is we have a we have a huge outlay of cash for equipment to accomplish that same thing. My concern with that is, I mean, if anything happens to the equipment, we're still replacing it. In other words, it's kind of complicated. Option three no, is a collaboration really. no. with SDS and Williams Electronics. Yeah. And they would create a system yeah. that would tell us, dispatch directly, who pushed right. the button. Right. No, I, button. I understand it okay, okay. But, but I'm hoping, and I'm like everybody else, I don't know where the money's coming from, but I'm hoping in the, in the future that we have security in this building. And so to spend 3500 would be a... Nothing. would be a waste. So if you did option two... For now. For now, see, like, the same system's in the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when, they, when somebody in the courthouse pushes a button, it displays on the panel who pushed it. Well, we have security there, so they can step out of the office and they yeah. can say exactly, or see who pushed the button. Yeah. You could have the same scenario here. Well, that option two, that really goes to a call center. What yes. kind of a what kind of a lag time is there? Uh, that's a good question. I don't have the answer to that. Before it gets back to dispatch, you know, because dispatch gets those on fire calls all the time from a call center, but we right. have no idea what the delay is. Well, it'd be the same delay on option three from Williams. I mean, you're still looking at a third party. No, the option three, their equipment 
would speak directly to our dispatch center. So in other words, as dispatch is sitting down there, it would, it would pop up on their screen whose <coughs> button was activated. I mean, that's your, that would probably be your quickest response time, but it's also your most expensive, yeah. unfortunately. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. It does. I, I just, I just really in hopes that we can provide a higher level of security in this, in this building, and, and, and that's why I don't really want to spend the money for option three right now. I would agree. Mm -hmm. So, are we looking at option two? Is that what, what our choice is on this? Yes. Yeah, I suppose because here, here's my assumption, Mark. Can you help me? We we are able. We we, we start this, and we got to we have to pay them three hundred thirty dollars a year annual Correct. fee. And in two years, we got the security taken care of in here. We don't have to pay the 330 anymore. That is correct. Right. So that's that to me, that, that turns out then to be a $395 bill less than the 491 Right. So I guess if I were to make the motion, I'd make motion that we accept option two for the government center panic button. Okay. We've got a motion to approve option two for the government center panic button. Second. We've got a second. Further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, the same. How would you like to pay for that? You got any money, Mark? <laughs> uh, the projects, I, I've failed to bring the sheet uh, today. I, I apologize uh, to outline all the projects I'm doing. Um, I'm going to be cutting it close this year no. to get through this. Get out of the commissioner's budget. Yeah, for Probably that. Probably should. Or I, I hate to take something like this to council. I know. Hey, you know, it, to, 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 to me, it's the amounts that count so prettily that I commissioner or uh, consultants. Probably. Yeah. yeah. We've got yeah. money in there that we yeah. can probably. Yeah. Send a bill to George. We'll take care of it. <laughs> okay. Well, we can go right past the second one. You've already, uh, did you uh, approve that, the chimneys for the courthouse? Not individually. We're, we're going to take that to council tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number three, the jail recreational repair. Um, this has been that project we've been working on for quite a while. Um, we got the reports back. You can go through that and look at that. Um, the recommendation here is to complete the work that Martin Riley has outlined. Uh, the total for that work is $17,018. That $17,000 includes the additional work inside the jail recreational area that needs repaired. And a new basketball goal or something? No, sir. <laughs> I think our thoughts were on that one to, you know, we had to approve it, but I, I think the funding should come from Kim Cap or Rainy Day. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. We've been over this, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I would just ask the council where they. So you'll give that a favorable tomorrow? Yes. Got a motion? Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Give this a favorable pass to the council. Any further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Okay. Prior to our conversation of what you were going to do. Um, I had already had this jail exterior masonry restoration submitted to you. Um, this is, uh, we had started talking about this two years ago. Um, 
I brought it to you last year. We elected to push it off again. Um, I guess I'm just bringing it back to you for the restoration uh, of the jail. The exterior restoration was 94885 And that, if I'm reading right, is only part of it? we got to do the same thing next year? This is doing, this is not a 100% grind and retuck point. That is correct. Okay. The majority of the, the uh, deteriorated area would be on the south side of the jail, uh, specifically the south side being the rec recreational area is in really bad shape. But then it also includes 100% uh, of the sealant joints around the caps uh, around the roof of the jail. And there are um, sealant joints around the arches, the limestone arches around the jail. That would include 100% of those. I guess the problem is we've only got so much money and there's not, I mean, we have to pick and choose where, and. Did you have the caulking on your list? I can't remember. Oh, for our seat? No. No. Sanitary lines for the jail, courthouse chimney restoration, okay. courthouse north and south sidewalk and generator. The, I guess the ultimate, or at the very least, what we need to do this year, or what should be done this year, is that alternate on the cover sheet there, that 11,073. That would take care of all the coping joints along around the perimeter of the roof, those limestone caps. And we have on the southeast corner is cracked, the foundation is cracked. That would uh, take care of um, epoxying that corner back together. Is that something instead of the courthouse north and south sidewalk that we postpone that? I would say this would take priority over the sidewalks, yes. Okay. <clears throat> we want to stop the water from getting in the jail, especially in those walls. What's the commissioner's thoughts? No, I guess that's a spend 94,885 instead of 70,000 so we, we need to come up with another 24,000 200 dollars we don't have that kind of money left is this something we want to take to council or well you know we could provide the 70,600 and if council wants to approve yeah, funding. Yeah, if they want to come up with twenty-four, another twenty-four thousand, we'll do that instead of sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you're talking about doing the the entire thing, the ninety-four. Yeah. But you understood what I said. If we didn't do that, the minimum we need to do is that eleven thousand seventy-three this year. So you are you recommending the eleven thousand? I'm saying if you won't do the total rest or the if you won't do the 94885, we at least need to do the 11,000. Okay, and I think that will give us another year. I think the question posed to you was, is that more important than north and south sidewalks? The alternate. Is it more important than the north? No. Or the entire job? The entire job. Um. Yes, I would say the jail would take priority over the sidewalks. And then I, I would suggest that we we leave the seventy thousand six hundred dollars in for the sidewalks and and uh, 
presented to the council. Tell the council we'll give, we'll give that much if you can come up with another $25,000. $25, that should get that taken care of then. And not, I mean, the 11000 is a patch, right? No, that $11,000 work is included in the 94885 <coughs> So in other words, if you did the 11000 this year, next year you would be doing the 94888 minus the 11000 Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just do it now and not worry about the sidewalks, I yeah. guess. Right. <coughs> Are you okay with that, Commissioner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And then the uh, the last thing I had on there was the two. There are two exterior doors on the jail that need to be replaced, and that came in at forty five forty five hundred and thirty dollars. Again, I think that's a great one to go to council with. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've tried to take on the larger projects, and I would hope the council could see that, <coughs> that these projects need to be done. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it is. Well, I get confused about this too, and maybe Mark also. Is there a maintenance line for the jail? It all comes there, out of. Does the jail have a maintenance line? Yes, they do. They have a maintenance line. You got that kind of money. I don't know out? what they use. I don't. That's not my jurisdiction, but okay. they have one. I don't know what they use it for. Okay, Mark. I'm sorry. One more time, Mark. I apologize. Normally, we keep up with things that are inside the facility, and then anything made on the outside is came here before. Okay. I, I guess I don't consider this major compared to everything else we've talked about. I'm not saying not needed. I'm just saying it's not a major expense compared to. Uh, the only thing I can think of is to ask. Council, if they can find the money somewhere, cum cap or rainy day or something. So I guess my my motion then would be to give a favorable pass to the council for forty five hundred and thirty dollars to replace the door and allow them the opportunity to figure out where they want to take the money from. Okay, we got a motion to for a favorable pass. For the replacement of the two doors at the jail. Sorry. Got a second. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Sit. Oh, yeah. uh, Mark, back here in that rec area in that jail that we talked about at the beginning. Yes, what sir. are they going to do with that overhead door? Is that uh, coming down? That comes down. The beam comes down, the door comes off, and right. then they repair that uh, column that's deteriorated. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Okay, um, other than the jail, I guess that's all I've got. Anything from the public? Call for the motion. So move. Second. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you, everyone. St. Patrick's Day. Or are we coming back?